looking back at my life, you know, from elementary school to middle school and high school, even through college and adulthood, I can see exactly how God has been working in my life. I may not have understood it at the time, but you know, being where I am now, I can definitely, definitely look back and see exactly how God was working. Um, I remember growing up in church. I went to Awana's. You know, I did Sunday school. I did Wednesday nights and youth group, um, and I was involved like a lot of people are. But there were definitely times where I questioned God, and I, I asked myself, you know, why would God do something like? what he did to someone like me. I remember first grade when my parents got divorced. You know, at the time, I didn't really think much of it. You know, I remember going to school the next day and high-fiving my best friend because his parents were divorced also. And so that just made us more in common. So I didn't really think much of it. You know, I had two Christmases, two Thanksgivings, um, and divorce was very prominent in my family. You know, my mom's parents got divorced. And so it was kind of just a common theme. And you know, I, I say that, but both of my parents really loved me and they cared for me. And even though I had to go back and forth, um, I never once felt neglected. And I was very blessed by that. Um, and I think one of the biggest parts of my life that I remember the most was when I was in fifth grade. I remember this day like it was yesterday. It was March 28th, 2009. I was at my dad's house and you know he was at work and my stepmom was home with us. We were getting ready for church and I was sitting on a big blue chair that I had and I was playing my PlayStation 2, um, specifically Star Wars Battlefront 2. And I remember just playing that game and you know my stepmom came in my room and she was like, hey your dad called, um, we need to go down to my grandparents and they lived right next door at the time. And so we went, it was me, her, my sister, we went down there and, you know, we were sitting with my grandparents just waiting for my dad to show up. And I remember he walked in the door and there was just something different about um, the mood. And, you know, I remember earlier wanting to talk to my mom, so I'd call her on the phone and, you know, she wouldn't answer and I'd call her again and she wouldn't answer. And I figured something was up, but I didn't really think much of it. And I remember my dad came up to my sister and I and he knelt down in front of us and that's when he told us that you know, your, your mom passed away. And I remember just the sinking feeling and just understanding that you know my life's going to be different and that I'm never going to be able to see my mom again. And I was a mama's boy and you know I, I cling to her. You know, if I had to choose between my mom and dad at the time, I would choose her every day. And I remember just thinking, you know, she's not going to be at my next birthday. I remember thinking, like, I never even got to say goodbye. And just the overwhelming weight that I felt on my shoulders at that point. And, you know, it was tough. And I remember at the time, I, I growing up in church, like, I knew about God. And, you know, I was always told that God's in control. His thoughts are not my thoughts. His ways are not my ways. He's in control, he knows what's going on. Um, but when you lose a parent at that young, young of an age, you, you throw all that out the window. You don't know what to think. And it was very hard. It was, a, it was an adjustment that we had to make. And I remember trying to move forward past that, trying to get back into the swing of things at school, trying to adjust to, instead of going back and forth from my dad's to my mom's, I was just at my dad's the entire time now. We had one house that we stayed at. I wasn't moving back and forth. And it was an adjustment period. And at the time, I would say that I didn't personally know the Lord. I just knew about Him, just from what I was taught growing up. And so I didn't really have a personal relationship. Um, so yeah, I had the questions of why God, but I never really felt connected. And, you know, I fast forward to a few years, and I was attending Winterville First Baptist Church. We went on a mission trip the summer going into seventh grade. Uh, we went through a company called World Changers. And the first place I went to is Indianapolis, Indiana. And you know, I don't remember specifically what the message was on this night, but I just remember at that point that I gave my life to the Lord. 
And from that point forward, nothing was ever the same. And, you know, it's funny, I remember the first time that I really felt God speaking to me um, was when the opportunity was brought before us to go from public school to private school. And we were going to go from Madison County to Athens Christian. And I didn't want to go. My sister was all for it. My biggest reason for not wanting to go was just I had long hair and they had a policy that you had to have short hair. So I was going to have to cut it. And I really did not want to do that. Um, but I remember my parents told me, like, hey, just pray about it. And so I was like, all right, I can do that. And so I went to my room, I knelt down by my bed, and I just prayed that, you know, if Athens Christians where God wanted me to be, that he would open up my heart to it. And oddly enough, as soon as I said amen, I kind of felt more open to it. And I went to my bathroom mirror and I started putting my hair behind my ears just to see what I would look like and if I looked good enough. And uh, needless to say, that's where I ended up. And, you know, being that young when you ask God into your heart, there's not a lot of differences just in the sense of, you know, I wasn't an adult that went through all of these problems. And so when I changed my life, then everything was drastically different. Like I was a kid, so I didn't really do a lot of quote unquote bad things. You know, I would lie, I stole a candy bar here and there, I was disrespectful, I learned what cuss words were and I used them all the time in the sense to where my sentences didn't even make sense. Um, but, you know, being that young, most of my troubles, with the exception of losing my mom, came after I came to know the Lord, where I thought everything was supposed to be perfect after that. But it definitely wasn't. There was a lot of growing pains and a lot of um, stagnant growth and to where I just wasn't going anywhere. And, you know, I would be committed in reading my Bible. I'd be committed in prayer and going to church. Um, I even started picking up music. You know, my best friend growing up, he was big into guitars and drums and rock and roll. And so I learned how to play drums from him. And we grew up together playing music. And then after a while, I was kind of just known as the drummer, so I wanted to learn how to play guitar. So I picked up a guitar, looked up some YouTube videos, learned how to play guitar. Um, music's in my family, and I was blessed enough to be able to sing uh, where it wasn't a distraction for people. And so I started leading worship for my youth group. I started leading, leading worship for chapel at my school. Um, so throughout middle school, throughout high school, I would lead music. And, you know, at the time I thought, I'm leading music, so like I'm in a good place. Um, nothing bad's gonna come my way. Like I'm, I'm doing really good. And uh, there's just been so many times where I've had to stop and, and realize that, you know, this is all kind of a front. Like if I look inward, then my life's not what it needs to be. My priorities are not in the order that they need to be. Um, you know, I put on a front that, you know, I'm committed to God, but in reality, I'm barely picking up my Bible. I'm barely praying. And it's just, it's, it's been a journey. And, you know, when I look back, I can see how God was working throughout each and every period of my life, how he moved me from public school to private school to be able to build new relationships. Um, I've seen how he's used even my mom's death to where I could minister to other friends that I had that lost parents that had nowhere else to turn because no one really understands that feeling. And I told them even I don't fully understand what they're going through, but I have a better idea than what someone else may think they know. And so I've been able to use that. Um, and you know, I've just been able to see exactly how God has used me in my time. And you know, I remember when I was in high school, trying to figure out where I was going to go to college. I really wanted to play football, and so that was kind of my mindset. And so I was looking at smaller schools around Georgia, around the surrounding states, trying to figure out where I was going to go play. Um, but at the end of the day, we just didn't have a lot of money. And so even with the scholarships that I was offered, I decided it was best for me to go to Valdosta State. I knew I wasn't going to play sports but I knew I could afford it with Hope Scholarship and with other scholarships that I got. And another thing that God used my mom's death to bless us with is that she left my sister and I 
$20,000 each, specifically for college. And so I was blessed to be able to go to college and graduate without a single dollar in debt. Um, and so I remember when I moved to Valdosta, that was a, a big turning point in my life because I, that was the first time that I was by myself. You know, I didn't live with my parents. I didn't have um, influence of friends because I didn't know anybody. And so it was my time to make friends and decide what path I was gonna take. And so I remember immediately getting involved in the church down there at Northside and they welcomed me with open arms and I felt very at home there. And Northside was a place where I feel like I grew the most in my walk. Um, I was able to be a part of their college ministry, lead worship for the college ministry, for the youth ministry, um, be a part of worship on Sunday mornings. And I was very blessed in just my walk and the friends that I made and how they encouraged me in my walk as well. There was a particular Sunday morning where we were playing the songs called Isaiah 53. It's a beautiful song and I remember playing the guitar that Sunday morning and you know I just felt God really tugging at my heart and saying hey this is what I want you to do the rest of your life. You know looking out and seeing the congregation worship God with all of their heart regardless of what they were going through. I was able to see how the music that I was blessed enough to be able to play helped them feel closer to God through music. And so that's when I felt God calling me to ministry. And I didn't exactly know what that looked like, but I knew that's what God was calling me to do. And so I went to my pastor and I told him, and you know, he presented me before the church just to affirm that that's the, the calling that God had on my life. And I was so excited because, you know, I didn't know what path I was gonna take, but I knew that that's where God wanted me to be. And so at the time I was studying criminal justice, um, that was the path I was going to go, but I knew that I kind of wanted to take a different approach. So I began looking at different schools closer to Athens, and I looked at Emmanuel College. I applied, I got accepted for their um, Christian music program, and specifically designed for worship leaders, and I thought that was a great opportunity. Um, I had a house lined up. I had another job that opened up for me to be able to coach football where I graduated high school and it seemed like everything was falling into place to where it just made sense for me to go there. And you know that's that's what I was going to do. I told all my friends I was leaving. My parents were prepared and you know a few weeks before I made the move, I remember my pastor at the time, Robbie Foster, he came up to me and he said, "You know, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I feel like God wants you to stay here in Valdosta. And so he opened up a brand new opportunity through the church um, for an internship program, something that's never been done before. And he offered it to me and said, hey, we want you to stay here. You know, we'll pay you, we'll find you a place to live. Um, we'll even pay for your school if I attended Drew McConnell online. And, you know, that just blew my mind because I thought I had one direction I was going and then God said, no, this, that's not where I want you to go. I know it looks good, but that's not the path I want you to go. This is where I want you to be. This is where I want you to stay. And so I accepted that job and um, started working at Northside. And it was just an amazing opportunity where I could grow and stay with the new friends that I made and I didn't have to leave my church family. And I was able to learn under Robbie, Robbie and learned under... David, who was the worship pastor at the time, and became really good friends with him. So during my time working at the church, you know, I really felt my walk with God getting a lot better. You know, I felt very close. Um, I felt like I could feel His presence every day, and it was just an amazing time of growth and opportunities. And I remember one year for my birthday, um, my roommate and I, we were going to meet my parents in Macon, which was halfway between Valdosta and Athens. And we were gonna meet for just a birthday dinner, just to have a good time. And we drove my Ford Focus up to Macon. And I remember we were sitting at a red light with the restaurant in sight. And all of a sudden, my car broke down without any warning. And it wouldn't work, wouldn't crank, couldn't figure out what the problem was. We were able to get it in neutral, get it to a parking lot. Um, ended up having to get it towed because we just couldn't figure out what the problem was. 
And it wasn't a big deal. My parents were gonna take me back to Athens. We'd get the car fixed the next day and then be back in Valdosta the next night. Um, and we didn't have any extra clothes. We didn't have any toothpaste or shampoo or anything like that. Um, but we went to my parents the next day, um, got a phone call from the Ford dealership, said, hey, still trying to figure out what the problem is. Uh, it'll be another day. So it wasn't a big deal, but we were kind of annoyed. Um, wasn't exactly sure what was going on. Um, so the next day rolls around, Ford dealership calls back. Hey, we figured out what the problem is, but it's gonna be the next day till we can get it fixed. Um, and so my roommate, Deontay, he had a friend that he grew up with in high school. Her name was Erica. She was in Athens, she was a UGA student. You know, she lived in an apartment complex with a pool. He rushed out to her, said, hey, you know, we're in town, care, you wanna hang out? And she was like, yeah, it's fine. And so went and hung out with her. And, uh, man, I, I formed a connection with her and, uh, we ended up talking a little bit and started a date and, uh, she ended up graduating UGA, moved to Atlanta and, you know, that relationship wasn't the best. It wasn't the healthiest. We definitely didn't keep God first in our relationship. Um, so much so that I got to the point where I had to have a sit down with Pastor Robbie and, uh, the youth pastor, Pastor Josh and the college pastor and kind of just lay it out saying, hey, this isn't a healthy relationship and you either need to end it or you can't work here any longer. You know, I was confused because I thought, you know, Erica is who God brought into my life. Just the crazy story of how the car broke down and trying to figure out how that worked and just how we met, I felt like that was God affirming, hey, this is who he has for me to be with the rest of my life. And so um, I wanted to be with her, even though I knew it wasn't healthy. I knew my relationship with God was um, starting to go a downward spiral, not because God was pulling away, but because I was pushing him away. And uh, ended up stopping my work at the church, decided you know, full-time ministry isn't what I wanted to do. I'll just do part-time ministry where I'm needed. And so I went back to Valdosta State and finished my criminal justice degree. I um, was trying to figure out where I was going to work. And, you know, Erica at the time was living in Atlanta. And so I applied to Atlanta Police Department. I applied to Gwinnett County. I applied to Athens. And it just so happened that Athens called me first. Um, built that connection. Ended up moving back to Athens to start work with the police department. And, you know, at the time, Eric and I were on and off. We weren't really in a relationship. We kind of broke up, but we were still talking. And, and I remember the first day I got hired at Athens, uh, made some new friends. And then a few weeks later is when the new group of hirees came in that we were going to go through the academy with. And little did I know that my future wife was one of those people. And, you know, we instantly formed a friendship. And, you know, it's funny, she even gave me advice about breaking up with Erica. And I know it's just because she wanted me for herself, but she won't admit it. You know, we ended up having a, a friendship where we weren't sure if we were a thing. You know, I knew I liked her, but I wasn't sure if she liked me. She knew she liked me, but she wasn't sure if I liked her. And, uh, you know, we ended up talking a little bit and going on a few dates. And, um, you know, it's funny, by the time we got married, not even a year had passed since we had known each other. And I think of just on our wedding day a year prior, just how different my life was and just seeing how God was using even my rebellion to further his plan for my life. And it, it's just being where I am now, looking back, it's a crazy experience to see how even in a time where I think God's pulling me one way in reality, He's pulling me another, and it's just trying to differentiate between what God's plan is in my life and understanding that, you know, His ways aren't my ways and His thoughts aren't my thoughts, and really having a new understanding of that meaning compared to when I was a kid and being told that and not really understanding what that meant. And it's just, it's crazy being where I am now, looking back. So even getting out of ministry um, full time, knowing, hey, part time's where I want to be. I want to help the church however I can. Um, 
I've been blessed with a lot of opportunities. You know, when I first moved back to Athens, I got involved in Riverside Church in Madison County, and they needed a drummer. I knew how to play drums, so I was able to build a lot of relationships there. And, um, you know, with my wife, Sophia, you know, her, as, as we started to build our relationship, understanding, hey, we want to find a church together. Um, she left the church she was at, so I left the church I was at, and we pursued a church together at Prince Avenue. Um, I was able to get involved there and, and play guitar for them, play drums for them. I um, was able to lead a Sunday school class with um, some of the youth and build some relationships there. And I remember one evening getting a text from Vince Schill saying, hey, you know, we have an opportunity at Doconey Heights uh, for a worship director position. You can be the interim. You don't have to commit. And at the time, I was working evening shift, so I wouldn't go into work until 2 p.m. and I'd get off about midnight, so I would be available every Sunday morning. So I figured, hey, it's a great opportunity. So I pursued that path, and Sophia joined me. And, you know, as soon as I got here and started knowing a lot of the people at Oconee Heights, I realized that this is exactly where God wants us to be. You know, it's a great opportunity to where I could continue working at the police department, but I could also lead worship, which is something I love doing and I felt called doing. And it was still part-time, so I wasn't overwhelmed. And uh, so I was at Oconee Heights for about two years. Um, I was able to meet a lot of great people, and I was surrounded by a lot of talented people. It made my job a lot easier. And, um, you know, as time went on, I went from... Evening shift, we got, the department got rid of evening shift, so I was presented with either days or midnights, and I knew day shift wouldn't work with being at the church, so I went and worked midnights, and that's when things started to get a little difficult, just because I would work overnight on a weekend and then have to come straight to church and lead worship, and I was exhausted, and uh, that became really hard, and then we learned we learned in August of 2022 that we were going to have a baby in April of 23. And so I knew that, you know, I wouldn't be able to work midnights, work at the church, and care for a newborn at the same time. But, you know, when we first learned that, I knew that was kind of a distant future. Um, so I didn't think much of it. And as time crept closer and closer to the due date, that's when I realized, you know, a decision has to be made. And, you know, Sophia left the police department because she felt called to ministry. And that was all around the same time that we found out she was pregnant. And so she tried to find a job in ministry, but couldn't really find anything. And as time went on, she got more pregnant and more pregnant. And so it was more difficult to find a job because, a lot of places didn't want to hire you knowing that you would immediately be out, you know, for a few weeks or a few months um, caring for a newborn. And so, you know, she was very discouraged on that. She felt God calling her to ministry, but she started to question that calling because an opportunity wasn't immediately presented. And so, you know, she began looking for jobs, knowing that, hey, if she found one, that we would have to leave Oconee Heights. And I felt a piece about it. She felt a piece about it, but we just couldn't find anything. And so we were certain that, hey, for the time being, Oconee Heights is where we're supposed to be. And we didn't question it. And so, you know, fast forward to March of 23, and our baby girl, Ember, was born four weeks early. And we were just ecstatic, and we were so excited. And, you know, our church family was so excited for us. And um, so, you know, we had her, and then, you know, a few weeks later, Sophia was presented an opportunity to be the children's coordinator at Green Acres Baptist Church, and we knew that that would mean we'd have to leave Oconee Heights, and it was very difficult because, you know, Oconee Heights wasn't in the, the best shape that we wanted it to be when we left, and we knew that us leaving would just leave a bigger hole that wasn't filled yet, and that was very difficult, but we knew that God was leading us there. And so uh, we made the move and we've been super blessed by it and continuing to build relationships to where even if we're not at a church for a, an extended period of time, we're able to build these relationships that will last a long time and build all these connections. Um, and we're not separated 
by, oh, this church is here and this church is here, but instead we're, you know, we're the, we are the church. You know, it's not divided by buildings and locations, but we're all one big church family and we've been super blessed with the relationships that we've built and continue to build. And I'm blessed to continue working at the police department. And so I stepped down from my role at Oconee Heights when we made the move and I just felt a huge weight lifted off my shoulder um, just because it's one less responsibility that I had. And I knew that I could still be involved in worship and so I've been able to um, lead worship at Green Acres one Sunday. I've been able to play drums and be involved in their children's ministry with my wife. And it's just been a, a huge blessing to see how God has used um, just my story and all the opportunities that I've had. And it's just crazy to think, you know, in the 25 years that I've been alive, all that's happened, just thinking, you know, in the next 25 years, by the time I'm 50, Lord willing, if I make it that long, just what differences are gonna be made and how once I'm there, looking back to see how God has moved in my life through my late 20s, 30s, 40s, um, through being able to watch my daughter grow up. And, you know, who knows where we'll be church-wise? Who knows where we'll be state-wise? Um, it's wherever God leads us, we're gonna go. And if we think it's one place and we pursue that, and it's not, then we'll go somewhere else and we'll just keep looking until we find where God wants us to be.